What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 66. And we start today's episode off by seeing confirmation of Dominic Calvert-Lewin's injury he suffered in the last game against Borussia Mönchengladbach. Thankfully, it is just a sprained ankle for DCL and he'll miss three weeks worth of football, including, fortunately for us, an international break with England. Uh, of course, Calvert-Lewin has started the season off as our best player and you'd say the Premier League's best player to begin the campaign off as well. Seven goals in seven games leading the way in the golden boot race right now, averaging one goal per game, and he has been absolutely superb, and a big reason as to why we've not been struggling more in the Premier League, and we're right now on a good win streak as well. So yeah, three-week injury for DCL. It's a shame. He'll, he'll miss a couple of big games for us, including the next one away at Old Trafford against Manchester United, but it could have been so much worse, and that's why as soon as he got the injury in that game against Munchen Gladbach, as soon as I saw him down, I thought, that's it. Get him off right now. Do not take chances. We could not afford to be about DCL for a long period of time. But uh, following that, we had an academy update as we've now entered October. You can see the two boys in the U squad right now. Seamus Brennan, the Northern Irish winger, and Nicholas Wilson, our young left back as well. Both look very good indeed, including Wilson. What is it about left backs coming out of our academy? He looks fantastic though. 92, 94 potential, 17 years old, 6 foot 2, and he's also got a higher overall to begin with, a 67 overall too. And uh, following that, I did decide to send my youth scouts out as well on nine-month missions. As I've mentioned before, uh, I tend to send my youth scouts out after the summer transfer window. Forgot all about it in September, so apologies for that, but as you can see, I sent one out to England, as we'll always send one out to the country we're managing in, uh, one out to America for nine months too, and uh, one to Italy for three months, and we'll refresh that one uh, throughout the course of the season. As I, I barely scout Italy, you know, that, that's one major nation I rarely ever scout. Anyway, uh, our first game of today's episode was going to be back in the Premier League away at Old Trafford against Manchester United. Coming on the back of that 3 0 win against Borussia uh, Borussia Mitch and Gladbach, the German side. And of course, right now on a very nice win streak after a tough start to the season, now taking on the Red Devils away at Old Trafford, who of course last season we beat back to back in the Premier League, including here by I think it was two goals to nil on that epic run in the second half of the season, which led us to finishing in fifth place. This season, despite back to back wins in the Premier League, it's not been smooth sailing in the league for We've been struggling quite a bit and heading into this game without our best player Calvert-Lewin We needed to have a good performance if we were to make sure we continue the win streak as well Early on in the game both teams started off well But both number ones were proving to be good shot stoppers very early Good stop by Henderson first and then Adero with a great save there on Tony Kept it at 0-0 with eight minutes to go in the half, whilst I might have just praised the goalkeepers, the Red Devils would go in front, and I will be honest here, Dean, who's been on a nice little clean sheet streak of late, four straight for our number one, when I think, judging by his reaction, he knows he should have saved this one. Meyer sent through, scuffed the shot a little bit, and for Henderson, a goalkeeper of his quality, I know it's only a few yards between him and the number 30, but really the shot wasn't right in the corner, it was very close to his foot, really. He just didn't react on time, he does like to save with his feet, Dean Henderson, didn't get anything on that one though maybe I'm being a little too critical but for Henderson's high standards I think he should have saved that one and it's 1-0 as the Red Devils take lead and it's frustrating as well because all throughout the game we were playing some really good football very neat and tidy football creating lots of chances but the problem we had was we just couldn't finish the chances we got 71 minutes in golden chance to level things with a free kick on the edge of the area and Walsh and I were a fabulous save with a goalkeeper there turning it behind for a corner you can see my reaction on the sidelines that said it all we had multiple chances all throughout the game but just couldn't find the back of the net and I'm still searching for my first free kick goal in FIFA 20. Question for you guys, do you think we'll score one in this series? I I'm saying no at this point. I know we're only four, uh, four seasons in but I don't think I'm going to score a single free kick goal in this series. Good save with the goalkeeper though, still 1-0. But again, late on, 12 minutes to go, sent through one on one, another golden chance. But again, it's a good stop by Manchester United shot stopper as he will preserve his clean sheet and ensure the Red Devils would get the three points. And we see the stats at full time as well. It really did tell the full story. You know, sometimes the match stats don't tell you exactly what went on. These stats definitely did. We created multiple chances in the game, but failed to hit the target of over half of our shots. We had no problem opening up the back line. The problem we had was finding the back of the net. Unfortunately, Morales, who picks up a knock as well, uh, is going to be out for five days. So he'll be fine for the next game. Just a slight little knock there. But yeah, it, it just proved there that we were missing DCL. Our top scorer would have got a goal in that game had he been starting instead. With the sprained ankle, missed a game, and that told the story. Couldn't finish our chances. And that means now, after our first eight games in the Premier League, after uh, with a possible 24 points to pick up, we've only picked up 12. 
Four wins and four defeats already in our first eight games for Sheffield United. Truth of the matter is, whilst we have had a tough start, we had Chelsea, we had Everton, Arsenal and Manchester United as well. Three of those four games coming away from home, it's still been a tough beginning for, for life at Bramwell Lane in Season 4. And that's why I needed a distraction after that. And this is the best way to distract yourself from tough struggles on the pitch. Go into a youth academy, promote some youth players and start to feel a bit better about yourself. I gave Wilson and Brennan pro deals after that. I just need to feel good about myself and as you can see Nicholas Wilson this guy looks absolutely superb four star weak foot medium medium work rate six foot two can play left back and right back has potential to be special as we know he would have with 92 94 potential there and I think with his defensive stats could also play centre back as well even though it's not in his listed positions and as for Seamus Brennan this young Northern Irish talent sadly he only shows great potential but he's got medium low work rates and he's rapid as well his top two stats are acceleration and sprint speed both in the low 80s and and he's got five-star skill moves as well. So whilst he does only show great potential, and I did mention before, when a youth player comes out of the academy, doesn't show the exciting prospect tag or higher, I would probably put him on the transfer list. I'm not sure about Brennan. The five-star skills, the rapid pace as well, I wouldn't be against keeping him here. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But Wilson in particular looks very good. Potential to be special, absolutely superb. And um, yeah, definitely one to watch. For the, uh, for the future and considering how he started off this season particularly defensively in the Premier League as well only two clean sheets in our first eight games who knows maybe he'll feature in our first 11 quicker than we would have thought still second game on today's episode on the back of those Euro qualifiers there which we won both including a 6-0 victory away at Northern Ireland to make it for, uh, three wins from four in our opening European qualifying group we will return back to club matters with Sheffield United and back to Brownwell Lane here as we will take on Aston Villa here in the Premier League looking for a response and a return to winning ways but straight away in the game seven minutes in Ben McCall our former goalkeeper we sold to Aston Villa in the January transfer window last season to make room for Eze made a great save on Ndidi stopped our club record signing from getting second goal of the game but just a few minutes later we stayed in attack mode we were aggressive right from the first whistle and it was great to see this as well the shocker Ivan Tony, who as we know has struggled this season domestically only two goals in our first eight games in the Premier League that that's not been good enough from last year's record breaker. We need him to start chipping in a few more times, especially in the absence of Calvert-Lewin. Well, that's more like it. Puts it past McCall, gets his third goal of the campaign, and soon after that, we will get our second. Oliver McBurney getting his first Premier League start of the season here. Gets already, I believe, his second or perhaps third goal in all competitions this year. We gave him a new contract at the start of the season. What a decision that's proven to be. Great goal there. It's 2-0, and the Blades are looking on course for a return to winning ways but in the 34th minute Aston Villa almost half deficit but talk about redemption from Dean Henderson I criticised him after the goal we conceded against Manchester United that is much more like it from our number one Fabio Silva sent through one on one I thought for sure it was going to be a goal I was about to start writing when the goal was going to be scored in my game capture HD but no Henderson brilliant stop there preserves the clean sheet for now keeps it at 2-0 and sends us into the dressing room still up by 2 and in the second half continues to stay in attack mode 15 minutes after the restart Oli Shaw going on one of those trademark aggressive runs down that left-hand side after Barry Walsh sent him through. Rolls it across and who's there to tuck it in right on the stroke of the hour mark? It's Ivan Tony the Shocker bagging his brace, his first brace I believe this season, making it 3-0 and ensuring the three points would be staying at Bramall Lane. So great to see the bros linking up there. Short already with his fourth assist in nine games. Fantastic start for our number three this year and a great win for Sheffield United. And that's exactly what we needed as well. You know, going away at Old Trafford, losing the game by a goal to nil. I didn't really make too many adjustments in our line adjustments in our lineup though. Pele got a start, McBurney got a start, but other than that, I kept the team very similar, didn't change formation, and the reason being was quite simple. There was no need to panic after that loss there. We're away at Old Trafford. We've not had the best starts of the season in the league either. Yes, we're going to lose every now and then. That was a loss there. We still played well. No need to make major changes. I trusted the boys would get the job done in the next game, which they did. Good 3-0 win there and, and so pleased for Tony as well to bag his brace because again, with Calvert-Lewin out right now, we're going to need Ivan Tony to score those goals. But uh, still, third and final game of today's episode now, travelling to Portugal to take on Guimar Reyes here in our third Europa League game. Uh, Calvert-Lewin would make the bench for this game, but still carrying his knock, wouldn't be fit enough to start the game. Now taking on the Portuguese side, looking to maintain our 100% record in the Europa League group stage and right from the first whistle once again we had started off in attack mode looking for early opportunities we got one 25 minutes in as Ivan Tony. well he's back baby little mini goal slump for our number 29 not so much now third goal in two games for him give Morrison some credit there for a lovely first time through ball into the shocker 
opens up his body, bends it into the top corner. 1-0 Sheffield United. Perfect start away in Portugal. And just before the break, a great chance to make it 2-0. Proper denied by a good stop by the goalkeeper from the corner. He whips it into the centre. And who's there to turn it in? Winning the header aggressively. Alfredo Morelos. What a start for Morelos. That's already, I believe, his fifth goal in the Europa League and seventh in all competitions since coming in in the summer transfer window. We spent £28 million pounds to get the Colombian in, but he is proving to be worth every single penny of that £28 million. Pounds. Great header there, so aggressive as he makes it 2-0. And in the second half, the Portuguese side did start getting some chances, but Dean Henderson redeeming himself. That's what he should have done against Manchester United there. Saves the shot on the uh, ground with his foot, clears it away as we hold on for back-to-back -back clean sheets and back-to-back -back wins in all competitions. 2-0 the final score, and whilst it has been a tough start in the Premier League for the Blades, are we the first to admit it? We've already had four defeats in our first nine games. The Europa League has been nothing but plain sailing. Three wins from three, nine points from nine, and you'd say now, if we win on match day four, we'll pretty much guarantee qualification to the knockout stages with two games to spare. But that will today's episode of Korea Mode, guys. A big thank you for watching. We hope you have enjoyed it. If you did enjoy today's episode, please drop a like. Much love to you. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the next episode very soon.